Welcome friends, welcome back to Cocktails After Dark, where I am exploring different cocktails through the ages and trying to find out which ones work for me. And maybe this will help you find out which ones work for you. Now today we're going to do something from uh, 1937 called the Amber Dream Cocktail. And the reason I wanted to do this is because it has chartreuse in it. And chartreuse is one of those liqueurs um, that I think doesn't get a whole lot of love, or maybe not as much love as possible. Uh, a lot of people don't know what it is, and so they steer away from it because they don't know what to do with it. Uh, I really like chartreuse. And so this is a cocktail made with gin, and I've got two different gins here um, with completely different flavor profiles. So we're going to make a cocktail with each of them and then kind of see which one works best with this flavor profile. There's also vermouth, chartreuse, and orange bitters. And I'm using orange bitters um, that are made locally from Kinsip. Um, Angostura orange bitters, perfectly fine um, if that's the one that you get where you live. So, first up is the gin. So it calls for one ounce of dry gin. And the first one we're going to use is from Dillon's. Um, it's locally sourced from Niagara, and it uses rye as the base spirit. Next is red vermouth, and again, um, this is from Dillon's, locally sourced. Same amount of chartreuse. A couple dashes of orange bitters. Ice in the tin, and give it a shake. Okay, take the ice out of the glass, and this gets a double strain into a Nick and Nora. Now some people have asked in the comments why you would double strain. Um, there are tiny little shards of ice that end up in this smaller strainer, sorry, in this smaller strainer that make it through this strainer, the Hawthorne strainer. Um, and so you don't want those in your drink because it'll just water it down as they melt. The whole idea of the shake with the ice is to chill the drink first, of course, but the second reason is also to dilute the drink. You want a certain amount of dilution or water in your drink just to balance it out. And of course, that's going to change for every person. What I think is the perfect amount of dilution may not be perfect for you. And so that's one of the things you need to explore as you work through cocktails is how much to shake, how much ice that you want to um, melt into your cocktail. <sighs> so many things to consider. So next up is the Ungava Gin. Now the Ungava Gin is a Canadian gin made from botanicals found in the Canadian High Arctic. And so it has this crazy sort of yellow color. Um, a lot of people find the color off-putting. I know for the first little while I found it fairly off-putting, but the flavor makes up for it. Uh, and then we're just gonna follow the exact same recipe. So vermouth, chartreuse, and orange bitters. I did three dashes last time. Ice in our tin. And we'll give it a shake. Okay, same as last time. We'll get rid of the ice. And double strain into a Nick and Nora glass. Okay, the Amber Dream Cocktail. First published in 1937, I think, uh, near as I can tell. Two versions, one with the Dillon's Gin and one with the Ungava Gin. The Dillon's Gin is rye-based, uh, very spicy. Uh, and the Ungava is, I don't know how to explain it. It uses a lot of things that you wouldn't normally find in gin that are found on the Northern Tundra. A lot of lab tea, very unique flavor. 
And I'm wondering how well it's going to work with the chartreuse, because the chartreuse has this amazing herbal botanical flavor. Right off the bat, the Angava is more of a yellow, more of an amber color than the Dillon's. Um, the Dillon's has more of a greeny tinge. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. So I'm going to try the Angava first. Definitely a gin cocktail, right off the top. You can smell the gin. Wonderful, wonderful. Chartreuse really does work exceptionally well with gins. Um, they seem to mesh perfectly. That is an incredibly well-balanced cocktail. The botanicals from the Ungava Gin are working really well. And the botanical sweetness from the Chartreuse. Chartreuse is quite sweet, and it's got this woody overnote um, that is just amazing, just amazing. And this is a great cocktail. So let's try the Dillon's. Um, I'm expecting a different flavor profile. I'm expecting it to be spicier, a little bit sharper because of the gin. Right off the top, it smells different. Um, I'm getting more of the orange bitter coming through the, um, from those orange bitters and not as much of a gin smell. In this one, the gin is more pronounced than in this one. Yeah, definitely a sharper flavor, definitely more pronounced in that rye note. If you've, um, if you're familiar with rye whiskeys, you know that spicy note that comes out in a rye whiskey? You really get that in this gin and it cuts through. And you can tell that they're the same cocktail, but they are completely different. I think I prefer this one. I think the sweetness comes through a little bit better in this one. Um, this is something that I would sip in the afternoon sitting on a patio, and I would really enjoy that. This one is a little bit more challenging, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that, I think that challenge would make me think as I was drinking it and wondering what's going on in here. You definitely lose the sweetness of the chartreuse. Um, the woody flavor of the chartreuse is changed a little bit. I think these are both great cocktails. I think then this is one of those things, again, like many of the cocktails we've done, where you have to try a bunch of different gins, figure out which one works for you. I've got five or six gins on the shelf. I thought these two were going to be the best. They are great, but who knows what the other ones would, would taste like. Um, you could spend entire afternoons just tasting through the same cocktail with different base spirits and always come up with something a little bit different, but you could tell that there's that flavors there, that they're all part of the same cocktail family. So in conclusion, I think this is a great gin cocktail. Uh, it's one of those cocktails that if you like gin, you're probably going to like this. And it's another place where if you've never tried chartreuse, you can try chartreuse and know that these flavors are going to come together really well. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be the Ungava. It would be this one. I think this one is just that much more pleasant to me. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.